Okay, so I want to start by thanking um, uh, certainly John, Eric, um, American University and the Instituto de Investigaciones Jurídicas for the invitation. It's, uh, it has been a really good experience, very nice experience to be here in the, in the meetings and I would like to say, I mean, I would start up front by saying that I would sort of break a pattern in, in two ways. One is I would be less pessimistic than some of the previous presenters. I would give reasons why I think we can be cautiously optimistic about what is happening in Mexico, even though I will show also the big challenges ahead uh, for the economy. Uh, and the second pattern I would try to break is I would try to stick to my time constraint. So if you help me, I will, I will try to do that. Okay. So um, first thing I want, of course, I want to stress this footnote. I don't want to be fired. So um, certainly this is not the official position of the World Bank. Uh, so I will, the, the, my presentation, will, first I will talk about some context in terms, of the, in terms of the Latin American region. Then I will talk about the challenges, some recent trends in Mexico, a framework I proposed uh, to understand the reforms, and, and, and that is why I, I would claim there are reasons to be conditionally, cautiously optimistic, and uh, f uh, some final remarks. So the context. Uh, the region, Latin America as a region, is undergoing a very interesting transformation. We can see the Gini coefficient falling. I have worked, as Eric said, with, with Nora Lustig analyzing this trend. The Gini coefficient falling, the laser pointer is not working very well, but the Gini coefficient is falling and growth has been relatively sustained, except for the, for the period of, of the crisis in 2009. So as a result of these two events, on, on one hand, economic growth, on the other, Gini falling, we have these trends in terms of, uh, I will um, uh, describe later how we define the middle class, but basically if we divide the population into poor, vulnerable, and middle class, for the first time in history, uh, the middle class as a share of the total population in Latin America is larger than the poor. And the crossing point is about 2010. So that is a major uh, breakthrough for the region. Having said that, and I, as I would argue later, uh, and this is what we have tried to point out in a recent report by the bank, um, we cannot say that Latin America is a middle class society. As you can see here, fundamentally, Latin America is still a society composed by vulnerable populations. And I would explain exactly what, what we, mean, we mean by that, and that has specific policy implications. So this is um, the trend, you know, 14 out, out of 18 countries for which we have comparable data, inequality has been falling, and Mexico is included. For different reasons, this, as Eric said, this is interesting because for very different types of uh, uh, policies, different kinds of political orientations, there seems to be a pattern that in Latin America the inequality is falling while in the rest of the world inequality is increasing. The main two reasons, as we argue in the book, have to do with first a much uh, better incidence in terms of progressiveness of the social policies, but the, and the second, this is in terms of the st state action, and the second, uh, more related to the markets, uh, has to do with an I mean, a change in the schooling composition of the labor force. So basically the schooling level of the labor force has increased and that has implied uh, that uh, unskilled labor has become more scarce, so the relative premium of high skill versus low skills has gone down, which has explained about uh, one third of the reduction in inequality. So this is a good picture in terms of the context. So how Mexico uh, looks in this context? Uh, so fortunately, Mexico is actually the worst performer in this, uh, in this uh, picture that I just mentioned. And as we can see, uh, uh, growth has been much more volatile. The crisis really hit hard uh, in the case of the Mexican economy. And the Gini has been falling at a, at a lower rate than, than other countries. Uh, the combination of this volatility in growth and, and a relatively flatter uh, pattern for the Gini coefficient implies that even though in Mexico the crossing of the middle class and the poor took place earlier than in the rest of the region, there is a reversion. So now uh, it, it has gone back. So again, the poor are, as a share of the population, uh, more than the middle class. And certainly, certainly the, the population that we define as vulnerable has been growing systematically in Mexico. So that is, in a good context, Mexico has not been doing very well. 
So that it starts setting the stage to talk about the challenges. And poverty found, uh, bounced back. As you can see, there was a very positive trend starting after the crisis in 96. Has been a declining trend in poverty. These are the three different official definitions of monetary poverty in Mexico. And as you can see, in 2006, this is just one of many dimensions in which the country reverts uh, in terms of the social progress achieved in the previous periods. Okay, so th this is this is not a good picture for Mexico. In terms of long-term challenges, and this is these are the two main things I want to st stress in terms of what is that Mexico has to solve to be sustainable as an economy in the future. One, it has to do with productivity, and the second has to do with equity. So these are the two pictures um, that sort of summarize these two challenges. Given that the laser pointer doesn't work very well, then let me show you here. You have, this is the GDP of each of these countries as a share of the GDP of the US. So it, it's, it's a measure of convergence, okay? So you would like these to converge to 100%, which means you are converging to the GDP level of the US. In terms of, which it's a measure of relative productivity and growth. You can see Mexico is pretty flat. So the, the growth has, has been, okay. So growth, this is better. Growth has been uh, really mediocre, and you can see the flat, uh, how flat this line is. So Mexico is not converging, it's not e e improving in terms of productivity, and as you can see, of course, the best performer is Chile, which has an impressive record of convergence. The other good uh, 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 performer here is, is China. No? Uh, Brazil and Mexico are very similar in terms of growth patterns. Brazil has been doing very well in terms of reduction of inequality and in many respects, but certainly growth is also a challenge uh, for Brazil. And Brazil has progressed in many ways after the reforms introduced by President Cardoso uh, particularly. Uh, and the other, the other challenge has to do with um, inequality. So even though uh, inequality has fallen in Mexico, is, Mexico is still among the top um, countries in terms of inequality.